Hi everyone, I'm Felix. And I'm Jackie from Shell 3 d And today we have a very special video. We are going to be comparing the E2 and E2CF, telling you the differences and clarifying some things. And we're also going to go over the applications for each of the machines. So let's get started. All right, Jackie, so let's give people the rundown on the E2 in case they don't know anything about it. Yeah, for sure. So the E2 is a fantastic general purpose uh, 3D printer. Uh, it has independent dual heads, the IDEX heads. So each one of the extruders are independently operated. So you can run in clone mode, you can run in duplication mode, and you can run in uh, mirror mode. Um, it also has a flexible bed uh, and a full enclosure with HEPA filter so that you can print uh, ABS and other more higher temperature materials. Right. Uh, so fantastic general machine overall. Right, you know, Wi-Fi connectivity, filament runout, some safety features like, you know, it can pause if you open the door. I invite people to watch our uh, product feature on the E2 if you have some time. But let's move on to the E2CF. Yeah. So, you know, tell me the experience you had with the E2 when wanting to print with uh, abrasive filaments. Yeah, so if you print abrasive filaments on the E2 and that's entirely possible, uh, you would have to change the nozzles to tool steel nozzles. Um, and then you would also have to have a solution for drying the filament before you use it. Um, and then to ensure that the, uh, the quality of the material is consistent overall. Right. Um, so there is a little bit of work to do uh, if you want to print uh, composite materials, uh, but entirely possible on the E2. Uh, but that's why we have the E2CF here. Right, so the E2CF is made to streamline that whole experience, right? So you get everything out of the box, abrasive resistant nozzles, you know, tool steel nozzles. You get these cases here, which you're going to tell me on in a bit. And uh, you also get, a, you know, a software that's really, really good with the materials that it comes with, right? So we have the nylon carbon fiber, performance nylon carbon fiber, and glass fiber for now, and the support materials to go along with them. Uh, so Jackie, let's start with the differences that are apparent right away. So what are those boxes for? Yeah, so this is the most obvious difference. The boxes are for uh, the nylon carbon fiber. So as you know, nylon is very hydroscopic, so it will absorb atmospheric moisture. So the box, the dry box, is to ensure that the material stays in a consistent um, uh, condition so that yeah. when we use it, uh, it our, our printing material properties are you know within spec and uh, our expectations. Right, so basically this printer is made specifically for just printing carbon fiber or glass fiber materials. Uh, tell us a little bit about the software side of things. Like, are you able to do all the tweaks you're able to do on the E2 or is it just specifically just for those materials? Yeah, so that's the other major difference between the E2 and the E2CF. So in the E2, it's geared towards general purpose use. So you're able to tweak all the settings that you want. Uh, you're able to um, use any materials, PLA, ABS, you know, anything under the spectrum. Um, the E2CF, though, is different in that it's geared towards uh, pr production use in which you're intended to use uh, carbon fiber materials. So mm -hmm. this is the software and all of the, the profiles are set to be carbon fiber nylon and the other composite materials and you don't have to tweak them. The profiles are really finely tuned by Raise 3D and uh, you can just select those materials and start with it and, um, and yeah, it's more of like a closed system experience. Right, so completely different than the E2 where you would tweak a lot of settings to make it work versus here, it's just kind of out of the box, you're good to go, it's just as easy as PLA. At least exactly. that's what I found. So the intention is, um, if you want to print carbon fiber, you don't have to do anything to this machine. It's mm -hmm. already pre-set up, all the nozzles are already changed, the feeder is already geared towards uh, carbon fiber, so there's nothing you have to do to this machine to print carbon fiber with the support material. Uh, on the E2, uh, you have a lot more versatility overall, uh, but you do have to do more uh, work in terms of changing the settings and uh, changing the nozzles around. Right, let's talk a little bit about the output. So once you print the parts, you know, are we done here or is there some more post-processing that we have to do? Yeah, so if you want the strongest part and you know, if you're printing carbon fiber, you're probably looking for the strongest part possible, mm -hmm. uh, you can increase the strength of your parts by annealing them. So that's right. something that you might want to think about after you've um, printed your part and you just want to gain that extra level of strength uh, to your parts. Right, so. so the parts come out pretty strong already, but to get that extra level of strength, you anneal them to get that 
really, really strong part. Exactly. And there's data sheet information for both annealed and unannealed parts. So you can see you know, what works for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can decide to anneal if you, uh, if you want that extra st strength or just use it as is from the printer. OK, so that was a lot of information. So what, you know, what is the difference? Why would I get the E2? Why would I get the E2CF? Would I get both? Yeah, um, you should definitely get both. Uh, <laughs> They do serve two different purposes. So you would get the E2 if you intend to prototype, you're doing a lot of one-offs, you're doing a lot of different materials. Okay. Uh, that's where this will shine because it's it's the, sort of the versatile one in the bunch. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing production runs where you just need the strongest part all the time, uh, you're not experimenting that much and you just want to hit the ground running with the best material right away, um, that's the E2CF. We're already set up for the best material. You don't have to play with any settings. You can start right away with the best materials right off the bat. So what I'm hearing is that if you just get the E2CF, you're sort of limited to the carbon fiber, you know, nylon family, right? You can't really throw a PLA in here, although you can, right? You can adjust the firmware and, you know, kind of get the same capability as the E2, but that takes away from what this is about, right? Exactly. The, uh, the intention of the design is different. So if you're looking for more of a closed experience in which everything is already set for you and you don't have to play with stuff to get really good parts, go with the E2CF. Right, but really you also want a printer that you can print PLA with, gonna do some design verification before you go and spend some, you know, some money on the filament here, because it is more expensive to print your you know, end use parts. All right, Jackie, so that makes sense. Tell me a little bit about the real world applications that the E2 will, will fit in. Yeah, so the E2 will be perfect in prototyping situations, design, uh, engineering. Um, so general applications where you're printing a lot of different materials in a lot of different places. Right, so when you need flexibility with a whole bunch of different materials, PLA, ABS, TPU, or anything else, you're going with this machine because it's kind of cheap and easy. Exactly. Right, so where does this E2CF fit? The E2CF would be more production oriented. So if you need your parts strong all the time, so jigs, fixtures, uh, end use parts, um, and uh, you know aerospace, you're going to be doing carbon fiber uh, nylon a lot. That's when you would go the E2CF because you're already set up for that. It's much easier. It's much more consistent. Right, and I would say you can sort of the reliability of this machine with those materials is going to be way higher than the E2. Exactly. Right? Yeah, where it's there's a lot more variables on the E2 to deal with. Like you're equipping your own uh, nozzles, you're changing all the settings yourselves. That's already all preset and tested uh, at the Ray's 3D factory. Right, so one question I think people will ask is, can the E2CF be my only printer? Uh, most definitely. If everything you're printing or most of what you're printing is carbon fiber nylon, you need strength all the time, then you can definitely go with just the E2CF. Uh, but you know, that might not be the best case all the time. Mm -hmm. So if you're printing in PLA or you, you need uh, you know, a less expensive prototype, you're just testing for fitting, you might want to go with an E2 um, because just PLA just costs a lot less than carbon fiber nylon. Right, okay, that makes sense. If you wanna check out the unboxing of the E2CF all the way to the first print, make sure to check out the link in the description below. Jackie, if people have more questions, what can they do? You can book an appointment at shop3d.ca or you can give us a call. Thank you all for watching. If you're ready to order your E2 or E2CF, make sure to go to shop3d.ca. My name is Felix. I'm Jackie. Until next time. Bye-bye.